Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Tarte Tatan. That's right, or as they say in France, Tarte Tatan. Anyway, this is a very rustic apple tart that's basically just caramelized apples and a crust. And something I've gotten many requests for, so here is how I do mine. So we're going to start by prepping our apples. I have Granny Smith, which are a nice tart baking apple, or so I hear. All right, so cut off the top and bottom, then go ahead and grab a peeler, go around and peel all the skin off. And then we're going to take a knife and cut these in perfect quarters. You really want some nice even cuts, so take your time. Cut it once that way, cut it once the other way. All right, once you've quartered them, take the knife like this and pull it towards you to take out the core. So basically we want peeled and cored apple quarters, and it's really not that hard. Now, if you're going to do these a little bit ahead like I did, go ahead and throw them in some cold water that has a little bit of lemon juice or a little bit of cider vinegar in it to keep them from browning. All right, so our apples are prepped. I did three apples, so I have 12 quarters. And once the apples are prepped, we're going to take a 10-inch skillet. This has to be something with a metal handle that can go into the oven. We're going to take some softened butter, a lot of it, like three tablespoons, and we're going to rub it all over the bottom and sides of the pan. And I'm talking like generous, embarrassingly thick layer of butter. All right, so don't be shy. All right, once your butter is spread, we're going to pour in, believe it or not, three quarters of a cup of sugar onto the bottom of the pan, maybe a little bit on the sides, just a little sprinkle, but most of it on the bottom. And I probably could have just dumped it all in and shook it around, but it felt good to dump it in like that. Enjoy the journey when you're cooking. And then we're going to place in our apples rounded side down, core side up okay so just like that we're going to go around the outside around the outside around the outside with the apples and if you're using a 10 inch pan and you've cut up three good size apples it should just cover it all right once your apples are placed in we're going to go over to the stove and we're going to place this on medium high heat and we're going to wait for it to caramelize so just like when we made our caramel sauce you're going to put it on the heat you're going to be staring at it not a lot's gonna happen right away, but after a minute or two, you'll see the butter start to melt and the sugar start to dissolve, and eventually it will start bubbling and caramelizing. I want that caramel to get a nice golden brown color, and I want those apples to soften a little bit. So after about 12 minutes, that's what mine looked like. And at that point, I turned off the heat, and I went to prep my pastry. So I have enough dough for a single crust. I just used the old standard Food Wishes recipe, so we're using a 10 inch pan, so this is about 11 inches across. I want it bigger than the pan. I'm gonna go around and crimp the outside before I lay it over, just to get a little head start, because you're gonna see what happens here. We're gonna place this over the top of the apples, and then we're gonna tuck those sides down in. So that little pre-crimping is optional, but it kind of gives you a little head start, because that pan's hot. So place it over the top, and then try to poke down as far down as you can without Sticking your fingers in 250 degree sugar syrup. That's not a good feeling. So be careful. But I want you to push it down all the way around just like that. And that is ready for the oven. So we're going to pop that into a preheated 425 degree oven for 20 minutes or until it looks like this. The crust is going to be beautifully browned. You're going to hear and see that syrup bubbling underneath. You're going to let it cool for five minutes and that's it. Five minutes, and then for the most terrifying and dangerous part of the operation, the old flip and invert on a plate trick. You're going to put one towel over the top with one hand, you're going to hold the pan with the other, and you're going to do one nice smooth flip. And then you know what happens? It doesn't come out. So you got to give it the old shake a shake -a, and it will flop out, and it will look terrible. You'll think you have a disaster on your hands, but you don't. They always look like that. Generally, 25-30% of the apples and caramel stick in the pan. But here's the good news. Hot, soft baked apples and molten caramel sauce is very soft and easy to mold. So simply scoop it out of the pan and place it in the spots where you think it came from. And think about it. Anything missing is in the pan, right? It didn't go anywhere unless you ate it. You ate it? Nice move. All right, don't do that next time. But as long as you don't eat it, spoon it out, fix any of the spots, and of course, as it cools, that sugar's going to tighten up. It's going to get all shiny. And you're going to have what you see right here, glossy awesomeness. I like to let it cool to room temperature before cutting. And if you do, you're going to have something that looks like that. 
that beautiful thin crispy crust those incredibly soft tender apples just sweet enough and yes you know what's coming next a scoop of vanilla ice cream and check that scoop out there are corporate food stylists weeping right now why can't we get our scoop to look like that why and the coolest thing about this is it's just apples and sugar as you eat this you're going to swear you're tasting lemon and spices and it's all just from that caramelized sugar and butter and the natural goodness of the apple really really fascinating dessert anyway there you go tart tartan i love a good old-fashioned american apple pie as much as the next red-blooded american but i gotta admit once in a while this is a fantastic fantastic alternative much lighter much thinner very rustic and yet incredibly delicious so i hope you give this a try head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual and as always enjoy mm-hmm.